So in this video, we want to discuss why the MPV function is incorrect in this case. It's not always incorrect. In fact, there are a lot of legitimate cases where it's absolutely fine to use the MPV function. We just want to make sure that you understand it so you can use it in the correct places and always make sure that you get a correct result. Let's jump in and talk about it. So let's start by looking at the XMPV function and let's tap F2. The XMPV function asked us about three things. It asked us about the rate or the discount rate. It asked us about the values and it asked us about the dates. So it understood the timing. Well, the MPV function, let's see what it asked us about. It asked us about the rate and it asked us about the values, but it didn't ask us anything about the dates or the timing. So let's take a look at what the NPV function was doing. We're going to tap F2. Since it didn't ask us about the dates, it must have made an assumption about the dates. Well, the assumption that it made was that it was going to discount this first cash flow here back exactly one year. The second one gets discounted two years, three years, four years, etc. The problem is that doesn't exactly match the timing that we've indicated with the dates. So let's look closely at these dates. From the valuation date to the first cash flow is not exactly one year. And from the valuation date to the second cash flow here is not exactly two years. So the assumption that the NPV function made is actually incorrect. So let's make sure we know exactly how the XMPV function is working. If we tap F2, well, what it's doing is it's discounting all of these cash flows back to this first date right here. So we need to make sure that this first date is in fact our valuation date, which it is. So it's working perfectly in this case. So the main takeaway from this discussion is that whenever we have irregular dates, like these ones here, we must use the XMPV function. The only time the NPV function will give us a correct result is if we have regular dates, which we're going to investigate later. For now, let's jump ahead to the next video and do a comparison of IRR versus XIRR and see how they compare in this instance. We'll see you there. In this quick video, we're going to compare the results from an IRR function to an XIRR function. And we're going to see in this case where we have irregular cash flows that the IRR function is once again incorrect and the XIRR function is correct. Let's jump in and take a quick look at that comparison. Let's jump in here and first start off by calculating the IRR right in here equals IRR. And we're going to open the bracket. It's just looking for the values. Really simple. Let's just grab all of these values like this, close the bracket and hit enter. And now for the XIRR function, we're going to put in equals XIRR like this, hit the tab key. It's asking for two things. The values number one, which are right here. We'll select all the way to the bottom like this. And then a comma. It's also asking us about the dates. Perfect. We're going to go from here all the way down to there and then put in a close bracket and hit enter. Now you may have noticed that the XIRR function asked us about the values and the dates, which is perfect. But the IRR function only asked us about the values. That means that it's making an assumption about the dates. And again, the assumption that it's making is that each one of these cash flows is one year apart, which is incorrect. So in this case, once again, the IRR function here is incorrect. We're going to put it in strike through font. Another way to get to that strike through font here is if we hit control one, and then we could go across here to font, and then we would find strike through right there and we could hit OK. That would be one way to do it, but we prefer the shortcut control five, which is just like this, and we can toggle that on and off. So we want to leave that in strike through font so we can see that that's incorrect. So really the main takeaway here is you want to really watch out when you have irregular timing to your cash flows, in which case you have to use the XMPV or XIRR function. Let's jump ahead to the next video. We're going to show you how to put a couple of footnotes into this model so that we can be sure that we're understanding and communicating the results correctly. We'll see you there. 
What we want to do here is just take a minute and put a couple of proper footnotes down at the bottom of this section so we can communicate to the reader exactly why the MPV function and the IRR function are not working in this case. Let's jump in and take a quick look. Now what we're going to do is go down to these gray cells here, to the first one. We're just going to paste in a couple of footnotes and we want to encourage you just to pause the video for a second. Make sure that you get these notes in here so they communicate good information over to the reader of the financial model. Now hopefully you were able to load or type those footnotes in. Let's just walk through them. It's saying that the MPV result is incorrect in this case, but the XMPV result is correct. And the reason being is because the MPV function always assumes even spacing for the cash flows. And you can see this footnote is coming up as footnote one, which pertains up here to the XMPV function. Now, as you can see here, footnote one, we're gonna have a similar note here for footnote two for the XIRR function, but let's save some time. We're gonna pop down here. We wouldn't mind if you could please highlight these two cells, do a copy, then go down to these gray cells here and we're gonna do a paste special. So Alt-ES or Control-Alt-V, and then please go down to values and hit enter. And you should get the same footnote here, but it should come up as footnote two. Now the difference with these second footnotes here is they should pertain to the IRR. So if you could please select these two footnotes and hit control H, which is a find and replace. What we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna replace NPV and then hit the tab key and replace it with IRR. We're gonna go down here and hit the replace all button right there and it should have made three replacements for you, perfect. One thing to note is that we really like this format for footnotes. We don't want to clutter up the model, so we just have these superscripts up here with a one and a two. And then down below, we have more space to spell out exactly what we're trying to communicate to the reader. Perfect. So great job at looking through at this cash flow profile with irregular timing. Let's jump ahead to the next video now because we're going to look at a cash flow profile that has regular timing and we're going to see and compare the results from. NPV, XMPV, and IRR, and also XIRR. We'll see you there. In this example, we're going to look at a cash flow profile that has regular or evenly spaced timing. You're probably expecting that the NPV and the XMPV function are going to match up perfectly. They're going to be close, but they're not going to exactly match up. One of the things we're going to do is discuss the reason why there's a slight difference between them. Let's jump in and look through it. So first things first, what we want to do first of all is connect these cash flows over so that we're using the identical cash flow profile all the way down like this and then do a control D for a fill down. Next up over here, we're going to put in an equal sign and then connect across to our valuation date. So this valuation dates are exactly identical, but now we're going to project forward with even timing. So we're going to say equals and we're going to use an E date function in here. You can see it pop up like that, e-date. It wants this start date right here, put in a comma, and then we're gonna hard code 12 months ahead. We can hit enter. And now we can select down with the shift key, and do a control D to fill down. So what we have in this case are exactly the same cash flows, but the timing is different for these dates. And in fact, we can see this is perfectly even or regular cash flow timing in this case. Now let's save ourselves a lot of time. Let's go across here. We're going to use the shift key to highlight all the way down. We're going to copy all of these formulas, pop over here and hit paste. And we've saved ourselves a lot of work. Now, some of these are in strike through font. We're going to highlight all of them and hit control five to put all of them. So they're not in strike through font anymore. So what we're seeing here in the results is a very small difference between the MPV and the XMPV and also a very small difference down here. In fact, those small differences are due to timing, but it's a little different than the timing that we discussed earlier. What we have in the case of the MPV or IRR function is we have perfect even spacing from one year to the next, but with the XMPV, it's taking into account leap years, which are occurring every four years. Same thing would go for the IRR function, assuming even timing between every cash flow, but the XIRR is correctly incorporating the leap years. So what we're going to do again here is pop down into these cells and paste in a couple of footnotes and encourage you again, if you could please pause the video and put these footnotes in place.
As you can see, this first footnote, footnote number three, is explaining the difference between the XMPV and the MPV. So what we're going to do, it's similar to what we did before. So we're going to ask you to go in here, highlight these two cells. Let's do a copy and then go down into these cells and we're going to do a paste special, which is Alt-ES or Control-Alt-V. Then we're going to go down here to values and we've pasted this result into here. Now what you can do while you still have these two cells selected is hit Control H, which is the find and replace. Notice how it's correctly remembered that we want to replace MPV with IRR in this case, which we want to do again. So let's click replace all right here and it's made two replacements, which is perfect. So just to summarize the key findings from this little investigation here, if you're working with a model that has even or regular spacing to the cash flows, you could either use MPV or XMPV. Similarly, you could either use IRR or XIRR. The results are going to be very, very close with the only slight difference coming from the treatment of leap years. Now you may think from these discussions that you're going to always use the XMPV or XIRR just to avoid potential issues. But one of the things you're going to find is that the regular MPV and IRR functions are actually pretty common. The reason is because annual models are very, very common in finance. And with annual models, they usually have consistent and regular spacing to the cash flow timing. So those functions work just fine. But another way that you can do it is you could use the XMPV and XIRR all the time just to make sure that there aren't any issues. So I hope you enjoyed this Excel course as much as we enjoyed teaching it and sharing it with you. Also, understand that it's great to organize Excel functions into groups or families as we've done in this course for you. And we really started off in the course with a group of basic Excel functions, but we expanded that to include the large and the small function, which a lot of people don't actually know about. We also know now how to use the round function, and we know that we can use it not only with positive numbers, but also negative numbers to round exactly the way that we need. Now, some of the aggregation functions that we also looked at are particularly useful. You want to think about these in families. Remember, we have count if, average if, and sum if as a family. And then we have the plural versions of these, like sum ifs, average ifs, and count ifs. And hopefully we understand the differences and the nuances between those now in that they don't always work with or logic and and logic as well. And they do have some limitations. We had a really thorough discussion of lookup functions, and you may have been surprised by the amount of time which we spent on the HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP, but remember, you're definitely going to encounter those in older legacy files. You may also encounter people that are opposed to you changing them out for XLOOKUP functions, so it's good now that you know the differences between those older functions and the newer ones, so you can show them the advantage of switching up to the XLOOKUP functions. We also hope that you appreciated all the discussions on date functions. We looked closely at annual, quarterly, and monthly models and included lots of date functions in there that can help you save some time with the dates that you're trying to get. We also looked at some really neat custom formatting that gets used for dates so you can have them presenting exactly the way that you want them to appear. We also did a very thorough comparison between MPV and XMPV and IRR and XIRR. And you'll know now when it's appropriate to use one versus another. And you'll also know that even when you're dealing with regular cash flow timing, you're still going to get some small differences between these functions due to their treatment of leap years. One other thing which was a common thread throughout the course was the attention on custom number formatting. It's critical to be able to format numbers properly and dates properly so that you can get all of your work looking really professional and clean. As we mentioned at the beginning, we really hope that you enjoyed this course as much as we did, and we hope to see you soon in the next one. We'll see you there.